Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hi, Scotty. It's John Boy. John Boy, you're amazing. I don't know how we managed to do that. That's brilliant. Yeah, John Boy, you're amazing. Yeah, John Boy, you're amazing. I don't know how we managed to do that. That's brilliant. So what I've done is I've just flipped over the hour, so there'll be two separate phone-in programs for tonight. Right, so you're for all of them then? Well, no, we're on as long as we like to be. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. So, Scotty, I've got your page. Uh-huh. Um, lost <laughs> more of it obviously. Um, I've got a photo of you there with glasses on. That's it. Now, if you look to the bottom right of that photo, Scotty, there's two boys exactly the same. The live one or the one up? Uh, the one right at the top, the banner. Right, so if I click on that, hang on a minute. No, don't click on that. You'll see to the right of that little symbols at the bottom. Right. Scotty, I can't see any symbols at all, sir. Can you not? Are you on? I wonder if you're on the app or the YouTube channel or what. YouTube channel, Scotty, son. So you're on YouTube.com? Yeah, YouTube. I've got the app on my phone. Right, you've got the app, so you're on the app. Now, let me check on my phone what comes up here. Right, so we've got that, and I'll go to the channel. There we are, we're on the channel. Right, so I see what you've got there, yes, so you'll not be seeing yeah. it. So right. if you go to where it says about... Can you see that, John? About, um... You see at the top, there's a sort of brown top there, and it says playlists, community, home, videos, channels. Right, uh, hang on. Hold on there. Take your time. There may rush. Send feedback, single mothers, all... No, right. No, I think you've put in... Are you actually on my channel? Right. First, first, first Lord of Internet, yeah, that's hashtag it. Photo. Hashtag photo. So 1. you. Uh, videos. Wow, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of videos there. Right. So the one below it is a picture of you with a microphone. Yes. Says live, the bottom right hand it corner. says live because that's what's going out right now. Now, up above right. that, you'll see the top 40. Uh, now above the top 40 yeah. with the glasses yeah. it says home videos playlists it, yeah. if you scroll yeah. that along so yeah. move that along to the left yeah. and they'll come up with a bit that says channels and about yeah I've got that. if you click on about, about. that should come okay. up and bring you up lots of information <laughs> I've probably had enough pies for one lifetime. <laughs> I've tried to get down to 20 stone. Yes. Yes. One particular friend, Julie Shaw, she's a mother well. Wonderful. A regular listener. She became her, 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 and him, her and David are best friends now. Wonderful. And Num Numpty Heed as well. Numpty Heed's brilliant. Numpty Heed's been around for years. Yeah. I was cutting Numpty Heed off when Methuselah was in nappies. I was I, I I was I was at the BBC when Doctor Who was still a nurse. <laughs> uh, okay. Right, so Scotty, you know what I've got to do? Uh radio, your station, your broadcast, we and David have became friends and oh. remain friends. I love that. Do, do you know what I, mean? I love That's that. Fantastic, That's fantastic. No, well, if I take my hat off, then my heat will come off as well, you know. I've had to, I've had to sew this on. Yeah. So, can you? Are you going to be on for as long as Scotty Scotty wants? 
Well, you want, kind of thing. well I, I will push off in it when, in a wee while once the people get fed up, you know. Ah, okay. I always I go, when I when I get myself a wee job, people say, when do you start? I say, Monday. They say, how Aye. long is it for? I say, just till my Aye. colleagues get fed up, so Tuesday afternoon. It's lovely to talk to you, John, and thank you so much for your help. Oh, you're welcome. I now know how to read to you, and I'm going to do it because it's got a very good cause. Yes, but not too much, just maybe a, a pound. You know? A pound or 50p. Ten bob, all right, Scotty. Ten bob note, that's beautiful. Five and one, five and two. Six and fluffins hate me. A shilling change. A shilling change. Uh, do, you re do you remember Hades? Of course I do. I used to get two chews for one. Can I tell you, John, I'm not going to yeah. bore you, son. Right? Wait till I tell you this. Yeah. I used to get the train to school for four pence. Four pence. When I had right. the four old D, the big pennies. Uh -huh. Now, what I would do, because I was a fly wee guy, I would take the bus <laughs> for two pence. And then, yeah, I would get off. I, I, sorry, I would walk the first step to sa save a halfpenny, and I would buy a halfpenny chew or two right. mojos. So how far was the walk, Scotty? Oh, it was a good old walk, maybe about four hundred yards. <laughs> so it was a good old walk for a wee, and but you could ask for three halfpens. That was your fare. Because my dear granny, God rest her soul, always used to talk about And of course, I used to sell, I used to tell the single mothers to keep their horn on their hatney. Aye, keep it on your hatney, aye. That's a great Scottish face, Scotty. Isn't it great? Just you keep your horn on your hatney, hen. I'm going to pass you back over to David. It's been great talking to you, God bless you, John. Take care of yourself, sir. Top man. Absolute top man. He's an absolute top man, David. An absolute top man. You've knocked it off there, China. <laughs> Thank you, dear David. Take care, la. Right, you too. I love you. <laughs> See you now. What a top man. There he goes. Great people. Okay, that's better. I do a search for him. PayPal. I'm not sure how it works. So there you are. So that's the stuff. There's a PayPal on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm trying to call, says Greg. Well, come on, Greg. Let's hear from you. Hello, Scotty. How are you, says Kareem? Well, very well. I can't find the link here. I'll check in the computer. I'm on the phone at the moment. Excellent stuff, Scotty, says Tony. It's on the about page, says Jim. Where can I get a dinky-doo badge, Jim? I'm going to work on that. Once I become TikTok famous, I will get you a dinky-doo badge. There's one on my hat for you. That's the one. Does anyone remember this? That was taken at Red Rose Radio. <laughs> How amazing is that? There you go. And you'll see a copy of that picture um, just up there. I don't know if I can get it for you. There you go. Can you see that? How amazing is that? Fantastic stuff. There we are. It's on the About page, says Jim. Good for Jim. What a great man. You're live in Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. Scotty, I'll give you a clue who I am. Do you always say that no, nothing gets past you? I'm from Newmarket. Do you know who it is? Ah, uh, it's Eddie Doyle. How you doing, Scotty? All right? Thank you, dude. How good am I? Ah, uh, how good? How are you, sir? Sherlock Holmes there. <laughs> Eddie, lovely to have you with us. We popped up Aye. for an hour, and then I thought we'd just pop up for another few minutes. Aye. Is there, is there any work on the... Uh about you getting on the airwaves the radio. Well, there was a lot of talk, but you see, stuff like this comes and goes. It's very interesting because yeah. I think radio owners are hedging uh -huh. their bets these days. Yeah. And yeah. you've got a lot of uh, young programmers that are risk averse. Now, uh -huh. the uh -huh. truth is there is no risk with Scotty McClue. Zero. Yep. Because yep. I've had a 30-year yep. track record. 
and I've had one complaint upheld, and that was a wee bit shaky, if you know what I mean. Aye. You know? But I mean, but she, she if, how, how, is it possible that for people to go for a, an, their own independent radio station with a certain frequency number, Scott? Yes, you can do all that, but like you need that. to apply and it has to be approved. So it can always right. get quashed by official dump. You see, what used to happen in the old days, as soon as you applied for a radio license, you got sent a form by the, in those days, it was the Independent Broadcasting Authority. Yeah. And they would send you a form. It was originally the Independent Television Authority, the ITA. And do you remember uh -huh. Alan Clark, the politician? Yeah. Well, his father was Sir Kenneth Clark. There were Clark's thread mills in Paisley, Eddie. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. You had Clark's right. and the Coates. These were the two big thread mills right, uh, right. right so the clarks made their fortune through that and then sir kenneth clark was a uh, lord clark of civilization because he brought out a television series called civilization right kenneth clark was his son the politician so he was i think the first head of the independent television authority Aye. You see, uh -huh. and yeah. then when radio independent radio came in, when they got rid of the pirates, and yeah. it came in in the seventies, so they extended that, and it was called the Independent Broadcasting Authority. And they would send out a form, and on that form would be a question: Do you know anyone of influence in your area? Right. So, if you were trying to set that up, you would get together with some pals and say. Um, who could we get? And they would say, I wonder if the Duke would be interested in becoming our patron. Well, so do you see Scotty, do you see yeah, what's happening? I, I'm not <coughs> trying to patronize you when I say this or anything, right? And the old saying goes, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your bum. Yeah, of course. Right. But I think you uh, being on a radio station, whether it, even though it's not your own independent radio station, I think it'll probably be a stepping stone to you getting your own your, your own radio station. Definitely, Scotty. Possibly, I can see where you're coming from there, Eddie. Yes, it's very yes, interesting. I mean, like, you, if you were to work with a radio station um, company, I believe that will be the build up to a stepping stone to go further for yourself. Yes, yes, but you see, the ones that actually knew me well. Have retired or passed away? Well, I don't know, Scotty, because I mean, how many people do you get in text? And I've seen it many a time. Do you remember Scott FM? Yes. Oh, I was, oh, now Scott FM, Eddie, I know we've said this before, but that right. really was Scotland's finest radio hour. Oh, brilliant. Man. You know, everyone was right. bopping along to Scott FM. The music, the chat, the news, the people, the personalities. Yeah. Everybody was into that radio station. And the danger was it was wiping the floor with the existing stations. Well, They were like rag dolls in Scott FM's presence. And uh, that's one of the reasons Scotty McClure disappeared. I'll guarantee it. It was so successful. See, if there ever came a day, if it ever came about, that you could, you could go independent on airwaves. Yes. Is, is that a pricey thing, Scotty? Um, it just depends on how you go about it. I mean, if I was going to make somebody a fortune, like we did with the Scott FM people, then yeah. um, I would expect to be paid a fee. Yeah. Definitely. You see? Definitely. From that point of view, whereas when I had my own station, the problem was, as you know, a stewardship problem. Um, but when I had my own station, then I was giving of my services. I mean, I know people who have, like, when it was Scott FM, like, rather than sit in the cafeteria and go on the lunch break, they would rather sit and listen to you when you were on in the morning. A lot of people would, would like, rather than watch the latest movie, they would rather listen <laughs> and tune into Scott FM to listen to Scott McClure. I, I was bowled over and very humbled by that because people genuinely changed from watching the movie to listening to the phone in. Yeah. And joining in the phone, and the carry-on was immense. Let's not kid ourselves, Eddie. 
There was huge carry on as well. There was serious, there was tears, there was sadness, there was laughter, there was fun, there was giggling, there was ripping the mints. Somebody once said to me, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. They said, are you ripping the mints out of some of your collars or are they ripping the mints out of you? And I said, it actually doesn't matter as long as somebody's ripping the mints out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've heard Scotty's voice. Peter Lord Collins, what he calls. You're a top morning. man. Lovely talking to you. And dinky-doo. Dinky-doo to you, Scotty. Dinky-doo to you, Eddie. Dinky top do. man. There we are. That's Eddie down in Newmarket there. A Scotsman, of course. And uh, he's telling it like it is. If you've just joined us for the first time and you're wondering what on earth you're watching, you're watching Scotty McClue live across the internet. This is the big one. Scotty McClue's megaphone in. It's Friday night. I think it's past me, you see. And uh, we've already popped up for an hour, but we thought we'd come back on and see who's about. Share this with everyone. We're live on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. You're live on Scotty McClue. Who's that? Scotty, you have to sack the lovable lassie. This one rang five times, not two. It rang five times. Five we times. Have that. Well, I'm being the lovable lassie tonight. So I'll have to sack myself. I'll have to sack myself. No, listen. If you wish for a second, can I tell you why I phoned you for a second? Go on. This had better be good, by the way, Numpty Heat. Right. Can you hear me, Scotty? I am hearing you. You'll be glad to Ken the leg is back on. Ken, I'm delighted the leg is back on. Thanks for sharing. But listen, listen, Scotty. What I'm saying is back in 1993, 1994, yes. when when you were on the, the, the nation station. The station oh. for the nation. The station for the nation. Scott FM. 2.8 million listeners. Yes. The, the station that broke the phone in. We broke the phones. You broke the phone line. We did. Now, see when... Uh, People used to phone you back then, Scotty. Ken. Myself, myself included. Yourself and I. Well, me, myself and you. Yes. Ken, what's going I've forgotten what I was going to talk about. I know I'm you have. Again. You're an awful man. <laughs> and I've forgotten. I've forgotten Thank what you, you were going to talk off. about. Come here, Scotty. Come here. Dinky do. Right, there's an empty heat gone. He was struggling there. And uh, what do we got here? Now, this is absolutely amazing. Oh, this is incredible. Guys, guys, what have we got here? Oh, this is incredible. Uh, Scotty McClure, so your bird's on your phone. <laughs> is it too late to change from being under God as the U.S.? No, no, we love God. There we go. Uh, Scotty tried to call in again. It cut me off. Kareem, it shouldn't do that. Technology is very frustrating. Susan Shaw, Dinky Do. Who have we got? Eddie, excellent stuff, Scotty. Welcome back, Scotty. Merchandise, please. The wonderful Susan Forrest. I remember it well, Scotty. Susan's in Lancashire. Watching you on my new Amazon Portal TV, a present courtesy of Mrs. Mack. You've done well. You've knocked it off there, Tony. I hope you're keeping well. Scotty Dinky do big shout out to Weege, George in Salkoots. Good morning, Scotty from Australia. Dinky do, how are you? Hope you are well. Frank, how lovely to hear from you. And Dinky do, I say. Wow, I never knew that about TV show Civilization. I learn something every time I listen to you. Jim Cook, I learn something every time I read what you've written. I prefer you on YouTube. Stay here, says Susan. Have you played the squeeze box lately? No, Frank, not yet. Scott FM was the best, Scotty. I'm back. Did you miss me like I missed you? More info and dinky do badge, please. Anita, yes, we'll get the badges for you. There it is. Can you see it there? Tremendous stuff. Good evening, Scotty. How are you? I'm sat here editing a YouTube video, Nationwide Coin Hunt. How wonderful to hear from you. And a big dinky do. From Scotty McClure. 
Why would they pull it if it was so successful? Because, Jim, they would they changed ownership and they would be getting terrific pressure from the opposition. Yeah? So there you go. I'm sure that Paisley Radio would love to give you a spot. The Scott FM days were the best. You're live on Scotty's phone in, who's that? Scotty, it's Kareem here. How are you? Ah, Kareem, I'm lovely to hear from you. Kareem, we just decided to pop back up. Was that sensible? Yes, no, I just wanted to say, I did try to phone earlier on. Uh, it was cutting out, but obviously people got through, and I just wanted to try again, and it's working. I just wonder if it had shorted out, Kareem, because there was a very long list of callers. Ah, right. And I'm very right. flattered. I'll tell you for why. Not in any trumpet blowing way, but I'm just very chuffed because, um, you know, there are national phone in programs right now that are virtually begging for callers and they can't get them because they're not doing it properly. They're not talking to the people, Kareem. They're talking to themselves. Yep, yep. And they like that, some of them. <laughs> oh, they love all that. You know what I mean? But they, they need to be reaching out to the people. That's what it's about. Yeah, inclusion. Get people involved. Let them feel part of it. And Kareem, do you not agree with me about the whole inclusion thing? If we've stopped putting barriers up. Yes. No, I think, I think this is probably one of the most inclusive uh, talk uh, shows that you can anywhere you know sometimes when you put on the radio and you hear a talk show as you say they're talking at you and it's quite boring this is just normal people phoning up talking about things getting a bit of chit chat it's educational um, and a lot of people come away from it i look forward to when you're back on again the next day bless you bless you well i can't say further than that kareem unless i can't pronounce my f's or th's I'm going to go to bed. Soon. You I'm must be bed. exhausted. You're yeah, probably up at five o'clock this well. morning. Sorry? I'm saying you must be exhausted. You're probably up at five o'clock this morning. Um, a very, very, we've got our new first years in the school, shall we say, Scotty. Uh, ah. Very challenging. Very, very yes. Challenging. So it's quite exhausting in that sense. Yep. Well, you take great care of yourself because good focus scares. Thank you. Speak to you tomorrow, Scotty. Thank you. Day. Do all the best, Kareem. Ta-ra-la. There we are. That's our Kareem. What a great guy. Just checking on the phones. So, Jim, yes, it's a very strange thing, but it was so successful. There's nothing to touch in Scotland. And nobody, all your top agents, nobody could believe that they'd actually pulled that phone in. And people were asking questions for years. They're still asking, what happened at Scott FM? And I have to say, I don't know. Uh, the, the second I finished, I went back to my house and the phones were going daft from the press wanting to know what happened. And one of the calls I got was from the boss of a massive radio station. And he said, what happened? I said, I don't know. He said, well, neither do I. He said, I've never come across anything like this at all. He said, there's something very strange. So I said, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I said, well, we were, you know, giving the opposition a real run for the money. He, went, yeah. he said, anyway, I can't start you tomorrow. It would be Monday now. And I think this was, I can't remember, a Thursday or something. And I thought, isn't that wonderful? So I was out of work for two days. <laughs> and then my career took off. Isn't that amazing? And if that was on right now across central Scotland or across the northwest of England, the audience would all be there. Yes, indeed. They're the Scott of M days are the best. Now, Jim Cook says he mentions another station. Nobody calling. Yes, you just disappeared. I was looking for you for years, but thank God you're back now. Bigger and better. Absolutely. If you've just rung on Skype, sorry I missed you there. Give us another call. Suzanne, it was just the strangest thing. But something, there's something very, very iffy about that. Do you know what I mean? Because I was on in the morning. Now, that's the most lucrative time for radio stations. And the others were losing their audience to Scotty McClure, Scott FM. Very strange, very strange. Good evening, good evening, Aaron. Lovely to have you with us. Jim Cook is smiling. Do you get it, Jim? Do you see what I'm saying? 
McClure will tell you the truth. I'm not bigging anything up here. I'm just telling it straight. So, you know, you're quite right to ask the question, why would they get rid of it if it's so successful? But remember, Scotland also has got something of a reputation if something's very, very good and doing very, very well. Somebody will try and tip over the apple cart. There we are. Scotty, you should write a book about your life achievements at Scott FM, etc. It'd be a good read. Kareem, you're very, very kind. It's interesting because a colleague said to me recently, said, why have you not written a book? And I said, well, I don't know if anybody would be interested in anything I've got to say. He said, are you kidding? So it's just interesting. So wonderful. Uh, not loony, lol, looking. Ah, yes, you were loony. You were loony for me. You were looking for me. The predictive text took over, Suzanne. It was that woman's fault who objected to the bad mother belting the little wains. Well, a bad mother should never, there should be no belting. Here's Phil. You're live on Scotty's phone. In. Who's that? Oh, he's gone. He's absolutely gone. Uh, very strange. Your morning shows killed the nightline. The nightline should have stayed. No numpty heat. The morning shows doubled the nightline's audience. Very interesting. So in other words, you know, we had this massive, massive audience on during the morning. Because you see, a lot of people say things when they don't know what they're talking about. When I came up to Scott FM, they said, what time are you on, Scott? He said, 10 o'clock at night. And they went, ooh, graveyard, graveyard shift. Nobody's going to be listening to that. I said, are you kidding? And then we got up to, what was it, about 150,000 people every half hour. Then on in the mornings, quarter of a million every half hour. That's big, big, big business. But you need to have a very, very big set to run a show like that. Uh, but the two ITV stations that owned it were tremendous. And they backed me to the hilt because I knew them. They'd known me for years. I'd worked for them about uh, 10 years before. There we go. I'd buy your book as long as you sign it since it's me. Nationwide coin hunt. I would send it and send you a wee message as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you you wouldn't be old enough to remember the Scotty McClure video signings. Oh, huge right in the corner. Because I'd gone for a cup of tea and um, I came back and here was this massive queue of people all around the stores. And I said to somebody, I said, there must be something big on. Would you look at the queues? He said, no, this is for you. I said, you're kidding. Because I'd expected a few dozen folk to turn up. There were thousands. Rubbish. The numpties only come out at night. You only get the 80-year-olds at 9 o'clock. How accurate do you think Alan Parcher's got local radio in his programs? Pretty good, Jim. Pretty good. <laughs> so there we are. But this is interesting about the night audience. Anita Page, I'm giving it all away here. I'm spoiling you. You see, I believe if your product is good enough, there is no graveyard shift. You might struggle in the middle of the night simply because most people are in their bed sound asleep. But, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I worked on a brilliant radio station that ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And through the night, they had great audiences, you know. So that's what I think. And you see, if you've got a phone in at night on a radio station, it holds for the breakfast show. So the audience switch off after Scotty McClue and they switch on for Robin Galloway's breakfast show or whoever's on in the breakfast show because they're already tuned to the station. Now, uh, Neil says, I've published my book already. Maybe send you a copy. Sounds good, Neil. Fantastic. You're a bit of a superstar. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello? Who's that? There we are. Difficult to hear. 10 p.m.'s fine, says Jim. Absolutely, Jim. We love that. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Yes. Who is doing? I told 10 to tell 15, but they only told 5. You only told 5. That's shocking. Uh, I'm going to 
I'm gonna tell the Rotten to tell five to tell to tell three. To tell a million. Good for you. Thank you for that. There we are. Fantastic stuff. Your product was superb for the nighttime audience. Wasn't suitable for the day. Uh, thanks to Watershed. Well, you see, the daytime audience doubled. So that's what I call suitable. Have you got it? Fantastic. I studied journalism at school. I truly enjoy writing feature articles. Anita, you're a very talented lady. Get them published. Uh, so there we are. So the product, very good for nighttime audience, but very good for daytime as well. And it really did steal the market. It skew whiffed the market. And I think that was the panic. So there we are. What's the model car behind you? Is it a Range Rover? What's the significance? Well, that's a little working model of a car I used to own. And I'll maybe do a little TikTok video on it. It's a, it's a beauty. It's a P38. I'll see if I can show you a bit more of it. There she is. P38, you see. And she's absolutely lifelike. Can you see that? So there you are. The P38 Range Rover, an outstanding car. Wonderful. And I got given that. So there we are. That's what's going on there. Would I qualify to help you get your autobiography? Well, Anita, what a lovely thing to say. There we go. It would take a lot of writing. I can tell you. <laughs> so I always remember a very famous politician. And I was invited to his sister's. And I said I'd just been reading her brother's book. And she said, well, he had this wonderful girl that came and wrote it all down. And he just told her the stories. So there you are. And that's a very, very, very famous politician with a very famous book. And that was his sister telling me all about it. It was quite magical. There we are. She had a, a lovely townhouse in London and I popped around uh, to speak to her about something. And um, I got all the gin. Wonderful. You turned out nice. That's what's wrong. Tell us if we are Sheikh Tussis and we'll phone in. Fantastic car. They were wonderful cars, Jim. All these cars. And, uh, you know, if you bought an older one that was in good nick, as a gentleman once said to me, it's a proper motor car. You know, because they got disappointed. I can see it. Congratulations on your model car. Fantastic. There we go. A cracking model and a great vehicle. Especially the big diesel, uh, Stephen. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? There we are. We don't know. Somebody's singing a song. La, 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 la. Scotty's memoirs sounds good to me. I thank you. How amazing are you? Now, uh, we've got lots and lots of feedback here, guys. This is amazing stuff. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So maybe, so you'd like a book, would you? I say to you. Now, has everybody shared this? Has everybody subscribed on YouTube? If you're watching on YouTube, let me check. Because some of you are very slow about subscribing and tapping the bell. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? How are we doing, Scotty? Who, who's that? That's Pedro again. Pedro, how are you getting on? Pedro. Uh, I'm getting on very fine. I'm just wondering about that taxi. Is that a taxi you got in the background? No, no, no. That's a, it's a P38 Range Rover. Because no, I'm looking for a taxi. Do you know any taxi number? Yeah, but I'll tell you a funny story, actually. See, when I used to go home late from the radio stations, people thought it was a taxi. They'd all be drunk and they'd be trying to hail you. Absolutely, Pedro. There we go. Fantastic stuff. Lovely to hear you there, guys. And thank you very much for calling in. This is amazing stuff. Right. That's that. Now, uh, who have we got here? There's somebody mentioning a radio station. There's nobody calling in. No, sorry, not yet, says Jim. Uh, glad to see the dump buttons working. Oh, nump to heat. Absolutely. There we are. Thank you so much for the compliment. Not at all, Anita Page. You deserve the very best. Top lady, 100% have subscribed. Thank you, Jim. I'm just going to check it because, as I say, 
Yep, if we can get some more subscribers on the YouTube channel, guys, that would be brilliant. You just go on to Scotty McClue, first lord of the internet. Uh, if you put that into your Google, it will come up. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be absolutely brilliant. I can tell you. I tell you. Now, I'm just sorting this out here very, very quickly. That's that. That's good. Wonderful. <coughs> You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Uh, uh, Scotty, it's uh, Pedro again. Uh, I've got to say, Chief Numpty Heath needs a plaster. I've got a box of plasters. A box of plasters. You're a top man, Pedro. I thank you very much for that. <laughs> there he goes. Wonderful. Now then, uh, just checking out the YouTube channels, guys, for tonight, seeing how things are doing. Uh, you can help by sharing. Fantastic. 100% have subscribed. CN, you post what the topics will be before the show starts so we can get our questions in early. How many subscribers have you got? If you don't mind me asking. Not very many. Uh, I've got 2,810 nationwide coin hunt on YouTube. So we need a good few more of that. I can't tell you for nothing. That's what it's all about. And uh, I'm just sorting out a couple of things here. There we go. Get that sorted for you. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful medium, this, guys. There's no doubt about it. It's absolutely outstanding. But it needs to be properly looked after, doesn't it? <clears throat> At 100,000, you get a special plaque from YouTube. I doubt you're far off. No, 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 no. Two and a half thousand. 2,800. We need to get that. Still a good chunk. Nice one. There we go, Nationwide. But TikTok, I've got 17,000 followers. So every day on TikTok, follow me at Scotty McClue. Go on to Twitter, at Scotty McClue, and follow. Let's start building this up. We need to get more. We do, Jim. I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface yet, but we will do. <clears throat> and tomorrow night, Saturday night, we will be on live. So make sure you join us then. It will be massive. Saturday nights are busy. I share all the time, Suzanne. You are very, very kind. I know it's a big ask because there's so much media out there. There's so many things. You know what I mean? You're live on Scotty's phone. In. Who's that? Nobody. They don't know who they are. <laughs> Poor things. There we are. They're testing the number to say, I wonder if it's busy. Let's phone it and hang up. They panicked. Now then. Oh. Big discussion tonight. We're looking at, uh, we're live, of course, on YouTube, Twitch. Now, if you've got a Twitch account, can you follow me? Right, let's just check out the Twitch and see who's following on there. Wonderful, wonderful. Wunderbar. Wunderbar, I tell you. Uh, has everybody subscribed to the YouTube channel? Do please do it. Scotty McClue, first lord of the internet, and it'll come up. I'm going to check the Facebook. It's always a good day. Although things have changed. I used to pop up live on Facebook and get 30,000 viewers immediately. You know? So that's uh, that's changing a wee bit, I have to say. But we don't mind. Everything evolves. There we go. Fantastic. Lovely. And that's us. Yes, please do it, Scotty. Lovely comments here. I'll just see you on. Welcome back. Thank you, Kareem. Kareem's also on the old... Ah, uh... oh, this is great. Watching you on my new Amazon portal. Fantastic. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? No, nah, it's no hearing, no listening. Somebody's no listening, I say. That's what it's all about. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Oh, there's Pedro again. Pedro, what are you wanting? You only two calls a night, Pedro. Yes, so there we are. Just two calls a night allowed. Hello? Hey, Scotty. 
Just two calls a night, Pedro. Yes, absolutely. Got to tell you that. <laughs> there we are. Two calls is all that's allowed, I say to you. Everybody knows that. Good morning, Scotty from Australia. Thank you, dear. We love that. Thank you very much, Frank. Now, so we're doing well on Facebook. Let's just see what's happening on the old Twitch while we're still up here. Yes, it's great. It's, technology is wonderful, isn't it? It really is. Right, Twitch. Right, we've got 58 followers. We need to have another two followers immediately on Twitch. So if anybody's watching and they can go on to Twitch, Scotty underscore McClue. Scotty underscore McClue. And give us a wee follow. That would be fantastic. And we've got one viewer. I need another two or three of you to watch it on Twitch. So we've only got one at the moment. I'll be listening tomorrow, says Jim. I'll give you a call. Do, Jim, because intelligent calls are always great. I've got to get on Twitch. Anita, yes, get on to Twitch and follow Scotty McClue. Scotty underscore McClue. I think I'll type this up for you all, and then I can just hold it up. This is the only criticism I've got of social media is that it's all URLs and information all the time to get it moving. There we are. There's the wonderful Stephen, a comment for me on Facebook. So if you can get on Twitch, Anita, that would be amazing. And if you can follow Scotty McClue. If anybody's watching Twitch right now, do follow me. And apparently it's also a great watch on Twitch. Very, very good quality. So there we go. 58 followers. So that's good. We had about two last week because we were new to it. There we are. Tremendous stuff. So if you can be watching me, that would just be incredible. And as I say, I need to get another half dozen of you watching right now on Twitch. Can we do it? Scotty underscore McClue. Scotty underscore McClue. If you're a gamer, go on and send it round all your gamers. Scotty underscore McClue. And see if we can get some more viewers, please. Because then we can become a Twitch affiliate. And that's a good idea, I tell you. I tell you. There we are. Fantastic. Any chance of another half dozen viewers on Twitch tonight? Can I call you, Scotty McClure, says John? Of course you can, John. Call us right now. I'd call you, Scotty, but I'm thick. I just about... Suzanne, who has told you that? You are far from thick. I've seen your comments on here. Highly intelligent woman. Give us a wee call and we'll chat. You can fill in the blanks if I don't know what I'm talking about. You've got the number, Suzanne. The door is open. This is a great time to do it, I can tell you. We've only got about another, ooh, about another 15 minutes of the phone and then we have to go. So there we go. But if anybody can get on Twitch, guys, that would be great. And let's see, follow me first and then watch the Twitch output. Uh, and that should help things a bit. So there we go. Thank you. We've got one more follower in Twitch. We need one more. Tremendous. This is absolutely brilliant. Wonderful stuff. So we're looking for one more follower in Twitch. And we're looking for some more viewers. Everybody watch on Twitch for a bit, guys. Yep, I can do that. another few viewers and another couple of followers. That would be brilliant. Scotty, I've used my two calls. I'm thinking of a wee topic for tomorrow. Well, Kareem, since we're the second pop-up of the night, why don't we why don't we do a government type thing and waive the rules for you? Bend the rules for Kareem. <laughs> and just give us a call. Hi, Scotty from Twitch. Big Daddy. Lovely to have you with us on Twitch. Thank you for watching. Tremendous. Have you followed Big Daddy? I need another couple of followers and I need some more viewers on the Twitch stream. Hmm. Oh, brilliant. We've got more viewers on the Twitch stream, guys. Scotty underscore McClue. Let's just talk about this. You're live on Scotty's phone in, who's that? 
Scottish. Hey. I'm using my third call. <laughs> Kareem, did you not love that one? We'll just do a government thing. <laughs> just break all the rules. The yes. Um, I was thinking, Scotty, earlier on when we just started, you said about animals. Um, uh, apart from dogs, what animals would you still like to have or you're quite fond of? Well, I, I love all animals. And I uh -huh. would be happy with monkeys, chimpanzees, elephants, <laughs> giraffes, uh, lions. I mean, I don't know if I've told you before, but my favorite teacher, most wonderful man, taught in Africa at a big public school, the Eton of Africa, for 20 years. Okay. And, um, I mean, just an amazing teacher, Karim. You would have loved this guy. He was just yeah. different class. And um, he told me a lovely story. He had two young daughters, lovely daughters, and um, his wife and his two young daughters and him were invited by an old game warden friend to come for Sunday lunch. So they drove out to the old reserve and, um, you know, there on the veranda and uh, they pulled up in their big car. He drove a Pontiac at the time and uh, they pulled up in this big car and he got out and the girls got out. They were just wee girls at the time. And he said to his wife, he said, Kathy, put the girls back in the car now very quietly and very slowly. There's a lion standing watching us. Oh, so... She's with the girls. Then his old game warden pal comes out to the veranda and does, you know, the two finger whistle. Right. And he shouts, Sandy, come here. And the old lion turned on its heel and trots over to him. Wow. When they got up to the veranda, he says, Oh, it's lovely to see you. He says, Don't you worry about this one. He says, That's old Sandy. You just give him a pat in the head. I've had him since he was a cub. And he starts okay. rubbing this old lion's mane. Wow. And, 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 and my old chum looked at me and said, I will not be giving old Sandy a pat in the head. <laughs> you know? Well, if it's anything to go, cats don't tend to like me, so I wouldn't be going near a lion. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> now you say that. Certain cats, they maybe smell the dogs off you, and because they don't know the dogs, they think, ah, so there'll be all that. I stayed with friends who had half a dozen cats, and I didn't know a lot about cats, and the lady of the house explained to me. So when the cat leapt up, if I got a shock, I would give it a wee push back, as I say, go on down you go. And she said, no, 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 don't do that, or she'll just dig into your trousers because she doesn't feel safe. If you don't want her on your knee, then push her on the way forward. Say, so go on forward. You see, now these are wee things you have to learn. You see? And uh, that was that. Anyway, they had a lovely, lovely big male blue point who was about, oh, I don't know, almost a couple of feet long, Karim. Huge creature. Anyway, I'd be reading, in those days we read the local paper, and it was a broadsheet paper. And I was reading the broadsheet, and the cat comes up, pads towards me, hops up in a chair, hops onto the table, comes towards me, head butts me with this lovely big soft head. It goes, boom, and then sits right on the paper. Now, that was the cat saying to me, I love you. I want attention from you, and I'll stop you looking wherever you're focusing so you can look at me. <laughs> That's how yeah. clever they are. All right. All right. You see? So, so I was learning all the time, and when you learn about a creature, like elephants. Now, elephants are geniuses. What Where okay. humans go wrong is they think that they are smarter than the animals. Newsflash, they are not. You see, there was a there was an elephant calf, a wee baby, got killed by poachers uh -huh. in Africa. The elephants formed a herd, found out, smelt where the poachers lived, smelt them out, trampled the whole village to bits. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'd taken the life of one of their wee ones. 
Now that's that's incredibly clever. Oh yes. So they'd had a meeting, Karim. They'd been in conference. Crows, crows, right? I get annoyed at crows because they try and break into your house and nest. They're very clever. Very clever. Very clever. Apparently, they have a funeral if one of the number dies. Apparently, they have a parliament. Ah, uh, yes, I've heard that before. Yes. A parliament of crows. And when you go outside, you hear birds chat. If you take a little bit of bird food out, a few bits of old toast or something that you've burned, you think, oh, I'll not eat that. You chuck it out in the back. You find the birds start talking. <laughs> They're going, here, there's a boy out with some grub. Who's going down first? Now that's got, clever. I've got two budgies as well as my two dogs. Geniuses. Uh, two, and they're just wee characters. Uh -huh. you know, um, I really, they're, they're just they're fantastic to watch. And what you're saying there about how you communicate and they are, they work things out. They're very clever. Oh, geniuses. Listen, I know a wonderful circus ringmaster who has an act with budgie regards, all beautiful, bright uh -huh. colours. Now, this gentleman, I interviewed him. I went to the circus and the ringmaster came up, a very elegant man. And he shook hands and said, hello, how are you? Welcome. And I at first thought this was the ringmaster just saying welcome to people coming in. Then I realized, I thought, I know this man. And I know him well. I'm just trying to place him because the circus wasn't where I expected him. Turned out I'd interviewed him in the radio 28 years earlier. And he's a very, very famous ringmaster. And he does an act with budgie regards. Right. Wow. You see? And you always remember you and phone and in, etc. Yeah, well, this this was well, he came on and he came into the station. Very, right. very famous ringmaster, lovely guy. And uh, he came into the station. And this was it 29 years later. So I said to him, I said, it's Scotty McLean. went, yes, I know. I know. I recognized you. <laughs> Incredible. Now, wow. his act, um, he opens the cages and he goes, right, everybody out. And all the budgies all hop out. And they all go on to his hands and everything. And then he sets up little ladders and bells and seesaws. And, and they, they perform the whole lot. And then he goes, right, everybody back in, and they all go back into the cage. <laughs> Ready for next round. One of my budgies has actually um, got a disability. It can't fly properly, and it's got something wrong with its foot. But it's it's lovely. It's just very, they're, they're both good-natured. Really Do they lovely. talk, Kareem? Uh, they don't. And budgies actually can talk like a parrot, but they don't talk uh, like that. They just See, I remember going to visit friends and they showed me into their sitting room and then said, just excuse me a wee minute. And they went out. And this voice as clear as a bell went, shut up, Maxwell. And I thought, and then it went, Maxwell, Maxwell, shut up, Maxwell. And I thought, who is that? I couldn't see anybody. Anyway, I came back and I said, excuse me. I said, I've just heard somebody speaking in the went. Where? I said, in the room here, they went, shut up, Mike. They said, oh, it's Maxwell, it's the, it's the budgie. So they had the budgie in the corner, and of course the budgie started to talk when they were in the room, and they would go, shut up, Maxwell, when they were trying to watch the telly. So the budgie picked this up. You know, yeah, these two don't speak though. They don't. My two don't speak. They just uh, like to squeak at each other. Um, but yeah, that's the And another sun, a Sunday morning, I'd been at a family wedding down in the northeast, ah. and I was staying in uh, Crook. Crook. It was the the name of the village, and I was staying in Crook in the northeast of England, ah. and uh, it was lovely. And I got up in the Sunday morning, and I was young. I I wasn't of drinking age. And I went down to what was the bar. And I was looking for where the breakfast was for Sunday, you see. So I found myself in the bar, which was empty, of course. And I thought, oh, I think I've gone in the wrong door. It must be the other door. And then I turned round and I heard. <whistles> 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 I 
And I thought, who is having a laugh with me? It was a minor bird. Right. <laughs> and obviously, if anybody came into the bar, it just wolf whistled at them. Just amazing. Did you ever see the wee short video, um, Kareem? I don't know if you've got TikTok. And it was um, a professor that had worked with a chimpanzee, I think it was, or um, or a gorilla, something. And the chimpanzee or the gorilla was dying, was very elderly. Yes. And he went over and he said, he, he took something to feed to her and said, hello, mama. And she was yeah. refusing the food. Then she yeah. saw it was him and went berserk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, hadn't, they hadn't seen it for a good number of years. Yeah, years and years. Coming back. Yeah, and she yeah, was very elderly and she'd probably. given up eating. And yeah, she just lit probably. up when she, she saw him. Now, I'll tell you, here's one for you, Kareem, and this is a big story. You'll always get a good story from McClue. Um, <laughs> London Zoo in the 1930s had an elephant that was dying and it was all over the papers it was the, like the front page of the times and the telegraph and all that stuff so in those days before you know big radio and television people would be following it in the newspapers because the newspapers had the run of the place for maybe 250 years when you look at it tremendous anyway everything was in the paper Anyway, it was all over the papers about the elephant dying and the whole nation was in a panic. How was the elephant? And Rudyard Kipling, the author of The Jungle Book and Kim, uh, Rudyard Kipling from, uh, from what's his house called again? Um, it's down in East Sussex, Batemans in East Sussex. And you can still go and this is another one that students are trying to rewrite history and say, oh, Kipling, uh, wonderful, wonderful writing, The Jungle Book, Kim, The Light That Failed, you know, Ricky Tiki Tavi, The Mongoose, and all these wonderful things, books about India, where he was out for years and years. But because it was the days of the Raj, people are objecting now. Anyway, uh, Rudyard Kipling, uh, who was a cousin of Stanley Baldwin, the Prime Minister, who was Prime Minister at the time of the abdication. Rudyard Kipling uh, asked London Zoo if he could come and visit the elephant. They said, well, of course. So he went, he goes to visit the elephant, lifts up the big, big ear, kneels down, lifts the big ear up, and, you know, just says something. And the elephant started to make a recovery. And somebody said, what did you do? And Kipling said, I spoke to him in Hindustani. He'd been a working elephant in his younger life and was missing his working environment where his handlers would be speaking to him in Hindustani. Wow. What about that? I'm not just an athlete, you know, Kareem. <laughs> Elephants are, are, are so clever, and they, yeah, that would have, like, if you think about mental health, about stimulation, but, you know, animals need that, dogs need that. Yes, you know, humans that. need that. Mental stimulation. Humans need, you look at how your dogs light up when you go down in the morning. Yes, yeah, tails wagging and everything. All about going crazy, tails going because they're thinking, great, food, exercise, love, here's Kareem, here's dad coming. We're going to get put in the car and taken for a run. Yeah. We're going to be fed some treats. We're going to get our water topped up. This is amazing. Yeah. So they're miles ahead. Now, they'll have been at that door with the tails wagging when you were getting out your bed. Sorry, say that again? They would be at that door with their tails wagging when you were getting out your bed. I love it. Kareem, I'm going to have to dash because we're out of time. Dinky do. Listen, speak to you tomorrow. Have a great day, Scott. I night look forward call. to it. Bless you, Kareem. Night, night, la. Good night. Good night. That's us, folks. We're out of time and we're going to have to go. 
I can't take any more calls. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Scotty Batu saying thank you do to every one of you. Good night and God bless. Taralas. <laughs>